So much for our discussion of alternatives to ideal sampling. Since ideal sampling was not possible, we had to resort to all these devious approaches to sample the signal using rectangular pulses rather than impulses. But beyond this, there is the problem of retrieval. Retrieval using an ideal low pass filter as we had mentioned briefly earlier is also an impossibility because an ideal low pass filter cannot be constructed in the real world. So, we will talk about problems of retrieval. <coughs> ideal low pass filtering or ideal low pass filters cannot be constructed without investing infinite resources either in the form of hardware or computational effort. So, ideal low pass filtering is out. What can we do instead of ideal low pass filtering? We can use what is called a hold circuit. Use of a hold or okay, a hold circuit is what you often call it. A hold circuit is of various kinds and in fact, the hold circuits are characterized as 0th order hold, 1st order hold and so on. Hold circuits are found in various orders. They occur in various orders. So, 0th order hold is the easiest to implement but is unfortunately uh, uh, capable of considerably distorting the signal. What is a 0th order hold? A 0th order hold is nothing but a system with a rectangular impulse response. All it does is to smooth out the impulse strain excess of T in what follows we will assume that the system has ideally sampled the input signal and so the input to our whole circuits will be excess of T the ideally sampled sample train. Now, this ideally sampled train will be subject to various kinds of holds and we will see the results. So, a system with a rectangular impulse response. So, it is actually like this. The width of this should be T s by 2 on this side and minus T s by 2 on this side. So, it is total width is T s. Now, let us see what it does when it is applied to a sample train. What we really have is let us say a train of impulses
suppose we have this train of impulses. The output of the whole circuit will stay at a value that is equal to the impulse, the input impulse which lies within the support of the hold as the hold moves from left to right. Hence, what will happen is you will get a stepped kind of output as may be drawn from here, uh, seen from here. So, you will get output of constant equal to this when the hold um, moves from all of here to all of here, so that its center is here has moved from here to here. When the center has moved from here to here, all we have got over here is this green line. Now, as soon as it crosses this, this impulse falls out of the support of the hold and the second impulse falls into the support of the hold and so the output abruptly drops to this value. It stays at this value until the next midpoint between two impulses and then jumps down like this and goes over to here. Then another jump, yet another and this is finally, the shape that you see. So, if we denote by x r of t or by x 0 of t the output of the 0 th order hold, then you have x s of x s of t going in and we have what I will call h 0 of omega or if you wish to write it in time domain terms we can write h 0 of t for a 0 th order hold and the output will be what I call x 0 of t. You can see that x 0 of t is a far cry from the original input signal x of t which might probably have looked like this. x of t would have looked like this, but what we get is some kind of a staircase that attempts to approximate the original x of t, a lot of distortion. A simple amount of analysis, a small amount of analysis will tell us what is the nature of the distortion as viewed from the frequency domain and we shall do that right away. What is the uh, spectrum of h 0 of omega? what is h 0 of omega. Remember that h 0 of t is a rectangular uh, pulse which is equal to 1 from minus T s by 2 to T s by 2. So, we just get h 0 of omega equal to 2 sin omega T s by 2 by omega. This is the Fourier transform of the 0th order hold. Now, where will be the minima of this? The minim, the 0 crossings of this will be at zero crossings at omega T s by 2 equal to pi. That means, at omega T s equals 2 pi, which is to say that omega I equal to 2 pi by T s then again at omega T s by 2 equal to 2 pi that is 4 pi by T s and so on. These are the zeros. Now, let us go back to the spectrum of excess of T, excess of omega and look at what we ought to expect. Let us say this is excess of omega. Um,
this is 2 pi by T s, this is 4 pi by T s, this is um, 2 pi by T s and so on and with 0 crossings of this at T s by 2 equal to pi that means at, at omega T s by 2 equal to pi which means that omega equal to uh, sorry omega equal to 2 pi by T s plus or minus 2 pi by T s comma plus or minus 4 pi by T s and so on. So, where is 2 pi by T s is right over here, 2 pi by T s is here, there is a 0 crossing over here and here, then there is another 0 crossing here and here. So, what we have is a spectrum of a hold function that goes like this. and then goes back like this, goes on like this, here too it goes back like this and so on. There is within the scope of minus b to b, where b could be as large as omega s by 2, you have a considerable amount of distortion in this system and also one cannot ignore the fact that this is also going to allow in a little bit of these two aliases on the left and the right. So, that you actually have a very terrible function which we will now plot the output x r uh, rather x 0 of t will have a spectrum that looks like this. Um, and the problem does not end there. You will have a little bit over here, you will have a little bit, you will have contributions from all over the place, which is easiest be described by saying it is a complete mess. So, this is what a 0th order hold does. Of course, if that is any consolation, it is the central alias which contributes the maximum amount of energy to x 0 of t and all the others contribute smaller and smaller amounts of energy, but certainly not negligible. Hence, x 0 of t or x 0 of omega, which is what I just plotted, this what I plotted was x 0 of omega consisting of all these little bits over here and here and here and so on. This is x 0 of omega is an extremely distorted version of what we really wanted. It is nowhere near x of omega, it is a complete mess. So, this is what the 0th order hold does. Co we will say that it causes considerable distortion. All right. Now, we can improve on this by using what is called a first order hold. You see a 0th order hold has a support of T s and a first order hold has a support of 2 T s. Let us make a note of that by going, uh, going over here, where we started the 0th order hold and say support of T s. This has a support of 2 T s. 
and the first order hold is simply obtained by convolving to 0th order holds. So, x 1 uh, rather I will call this h 1 of t is nothing but h 0 of t convolved with h 0 of t. Similarly, you would have a second order hold h 2 of t equal to h 1 of t convolved with h 0 of t that is a second order hold support of of 3 T s and so on. You can have finite order holds of all these values and these are the standard second first and second order holds that we are considering. One can of course, make modifications of these. Now, what is the shape of the impulse response of H 1 of t? Because it is the convolution, you can see that H 1 of t will be just this. This is T s, this is minus T s this will be of this form. A triangular pulse, this is what we call H 1 of t and because it is a triangular pulse, we call it a linear interpolator. Now, this is a convolution of this triangle with another rectangular pulse H 0 of t of width T s. So, that the overall support is even wider T s minus T s and so you get a function that looks like this. which goes to 0 exactly at 1.5 T s on the right side and minus 1.5 T s on the left side. Now, the first order hold is fine and it gives a better response than the 0th order hold, but the second order hold onwards troubles begin. You see, the first order hold has a very desirable property that while it is non-zero at T equal to 0, it is 0 at T s at minus T s and that for all values k T s greater than k greater than 1 mod k greater than 1. Okay. But the second order hold unfortunately, has a non-zero value at these places, at these places T s and minus T s it has a non-zero value. Now, that is trouble, because if you convolve x T with a second order hold such as h 2 of T then the output which we will call x 2 of t does not even match x of t at the points t equal to n t s. Let us put this down. A desirable property of any hold circuit or any retrieval circuit, any retrieval system is that the output should um, instead of calling it a retrieval system, which it is of course, we will call it an interpolator. Is that the output should coincide with the input 
at the data points given. Thus, if y t is the result of an interpolation, then y t must be equal to x t at t equal to n t s. Though of course, at other places where x t is 0, it ought to fill up fill in values by computation in some manner. Now, this property is upheld by h 0 of t as also h 1 of t, because both these satisfy h i of t equal to 0 at t equal to n t s n not equal to 0. This is a very, very important property, but h 2 of t onwards this property is lost. So, that while x 0 of t equals x 1 of t equals x t at t equals n t s, x i of t is not equal to x of n t s for i greater than 1. Hence, there is no point in concerning ourselves with anything more than a first order hold. What the first order hold itself does, we will just illustrate by a diagram, a figure and then we will leave our first order hold and have a final last discussion about how the ideal low pass filter is also a hold circuit, but of infinite order. So, the first order hold let us say this is the original x t it has been ideally sampled. So, you have a sample train that looks like this. And on the basis of the information available in the sample train, this is x s of t sample train, we have to carry out an interpolation and what the first order hold does, the 0th order hold produced a staircase. What this produces is a series of ramps and it achieves this by simply connecting the tops of these samples with straight lines. Clearly, this is x 1 of t, this x 1 of t is sometimes above the curve, sometimes below the curve and so on. And so, one can never be really sure whether it exceeds or is less than the values of x t. However, at least we know that it joins the tops of the samples with a straight line as it is doing here fine. So, this is what is done by a first order hold x 1 of t, the output of the first order hold is x 1 of t. 
Now, the ideal low pass filter as an interpolator the ideal low pass filter seen as an interpolator must be viewed in the time domain remember that l omega was given by the expression it is equal to 1 for mod omega less than b and it is equal to 0 for mod omega greater than b fine now okay what is l of t well for a rectangular system like this l of t is given by w uh, b by pi sin b t by t the time domain expression for l omega that is l t is sin b t by pi t this clearly has zero crossings at b t equal to k pi that is at t equal to k pi by b. minus infinity less than pi less than b right if we choose b equal to omega s by 2 that is if we tailor the filter so that its bandwidth is equal to half the sampling frequency if the filter bandwidth is made equal to half exactly half the sampling frequency frequency omega s we get the zero crossings of l of t at t equal to k pi by Uh, k into 2 pi by T s divided by 2 that is b is equal to half of this. So, uh, let us let, let just see what, what that comes to. Uh, we write b equals omega s by 2. So, L of t will be equal to sin omega s uh, by 2 into t divided by pi t. So, that the 0 crossings would be at omega s by 2 t uh, omega s by uh, omega s t by 2 equal to k pi. Uh, so, 2 k pi omega s is 2 pi by t s. Let us just go to the next page. So, you have omega s t by 2 equals 
k pi that is to say that omega s is actually 2 pi by T s 2 pi by 2 T s equals k pi. So, you get uh, uh, 2 pi T by 2 T s equals this. So, you get at um, the 0 crossings crossings of L t occur at um, k pi by T s. Mm, just a minute. At t equal to k t s, right? At t equal to k t s. That means, let us just superpose the impulse response of the low pass filter, ideal low pass filter, whose bandwidth is equal to half of omega s with the sample train itself. Let us make a sample train this is the sum sample train. So, this is actually x s of t this is the sample train you have and then let us make the impulse response of L t sit at t equal to 0 that is centered about the origin and let it look like this. It has 0 crossings at t equal to k t s. So, here you have t s uh, sorry T s, 2 T s, 3 T s, 0 minus T s, minus 2 T s, minus 3 T s and so on. And we are assured that except for T s equal to 0, except for T equal to 0, you have 0 crossings at all these other places. So, the impulse response would look like this. and then it would go up like this this is l of l of t now what's so special about this l of t it can be seen that when t equal to n t s the contribution to the output y of t is solely from S f n t s as L of t um, L of t minus n t s is 0 at all k t s k not equal to n. Hence, the reconstructed signal y of t equals x of t exactly 
at all the given data points n t s. When t is not equal to n t s, y of t is generated by L of t as an infinite linear combination of the excess at n t s for all n minus infinity less than n less than infinity. That is why it is an infinite order interpolator. It is called an right from the time when we learnt about the continuous time Fourier transform, it is not hard to show that if a function has finite support in the time domain, then its frequency response will have an infinite support. And that is the case here also, because it is just the dual of that statement. In the frequency domain, L of t is a rectangle and hence L of omega is a rectangle and hence L of t is the sink function which never completely goes to 0 for however large values of t. It is in fact this property of the rectangle which enforces that for any signal, this is an important theorem. For any x t with finite support that is to say x uh, there exist a b such that minus infinity is less than a and b less than infinity and x t equals 0 t less than a t greater than b. This is what we mean by finite support. Whenever x t has finite support, x omega will invariably have infinite support. x omega will have invariably have infinite support. To prove this, let us recognize that x t can be written as equal to x t multiplied by r a comma b of t, where r a comma b of t is a rectangular pulse. r a b of t equals 1 for a less than t less than b was 0 elsewhere. Once we recognize that we can write x t like this, 
it is another simple step forward to see that x omega equals x omega convolved 1 by 2 pi of course, times this convolved with r a b of omega. Now, we know that a rectangular pulse like r a b of t will have an infinite support in the frequency domain r a b of omega will have infinite support. That is to say, there does not exist say P Q such that R A B of omega equals 0 for omega less than P omega greater than Q. That is why we say R A B has infinite support. Now, finally, since x omega um, equals 1 by 2 pi x omega convolved with r a b of omega. The support of x omega x omega cannot be less than that of R A B of omega. This last remark follows from the fact that under convolution the support of the convolution of two functions is the sum of the supports of the respective functions. their respective supports. It is on this principle that we finally claim that x omega has infinite support. Thus, if x t has finite support x omega has infinite support and by duality the converse also holds. the converse is also true. Finally, some concluding remarks about the theory of signal sampling and interpolation.
the main thing is that it is an idealistic theory. and cannot be strictly applied in practical problems. This is because we will go to the next point no real life function of time, no real life signal has infinite support. Has infinite support. Every signal begins somewhere and ends somewhere. So, it has only finite support. Every signal somewhere begins somewhere and ends somewhere and thus has only finite support. From this it follows that it has infinite bandwidth. From the above it follows that any real life signal will have infinite bandwidth. Thus, from the sampling theorem, it cannot be sampled with a finite sampling rate. in a practical situation we get by the above problem we bypass the above problem problem by forcibly low pass filtering the input signal. The input signal to restrict its bandwidth. 